We found three inspiring stories of nature healing cities and lives on three different scales, societal, community and individual. All have the common goal of planning and building a greener future and are successful in doing so. Let's have a look at what they're doing and how they're doing it. Welcome to Symbiosis, presenting real-life stories and steps for you to take towards achieving harmony between humans, nature and technology. Let's start with a story on a societal scale. We're talking green streets, squares and parks that will reintroduce flowers, insects and small animals to the city. In the Netherlands, Rotterdam is greenifying its city with seven massive urban greening projects. These projects, taking place in seven different areas of the city, will also help to cool down the city on warm summer days, whilst also preventing flooding when it rains. This is the green transformation story of the once ugly industrial city of Rotterdam. If you thought that was it, hold on. Rotterdam has also embraced its environment and has learned how to work with it. They've gone so far as to add a new floating city street. The city has built several floating homes with the hope that they'll withstand rising sea levels and be resilient to flooding. This floating street is powered by renewable energy and has its own water purification system. Interestingly enough, Rotterdam's development of floating cities isn't unique. For example, Amsterdam is also exploring this innovative solution. Amsterdam has a whole neighborhood of floating homes that would be protected against flooding and thus be more resilient to the impacts of climate change. Projects like these show the potential of floating structures to provide housing, mitigate the impacts of flooding, and promote sustainability and resilience. But back to the story. Rotterdam is now making bold moves to transform itself into a stunning green metropolis. After Corona, the city realized that they wanted to Corona-proof the city to make it more livable for all people while maintaining social distancing. The city has thus invested a staggering 233 million euros into seven ambitious projects that will bring lush green spaces, refreshing fountains, and breathtaking landscapes to the heart of the city. When starting the seven city projects, the residents of Rotterdam had the chance to give suggestions on how to improve the city. The residents contributed with ideas such as more trees in streets and fewer parking spaces, more green roofs, tile gardens, and bulb beds in parks. The planners took note and will now revitalize seven parts of its city to make nature and green spaces more accessible to its citizens. A part of the vision is to reduce the number of car lanes and increase bicycle access. Green space should be no further away than 15 minutes. The city will plant new trees such as alders, elms, birches and fountains for kids to play in. Water capture systems will store and irrigate new lush greenery when needed. These projects, which are part of the Rotterdam Onwards Stronger campaign, will reduce the stress levels of the citizens and make it more attractive for both businesses and tourists. And the best part? These amazing transformations will be completed within the next decade, with work starting in 2024. If you want to learn about the philosophy and approach to the Seven City Projects, check out the PDF presentation in the description below. It's a great read. Next up, how about a project on a community scale? Urban farming, green roofs, workshops, and backyard gardens. Let's move on to a story about how a group of people, a company, is bringing farming and nature into New York City. This story is also about creating more inclusive and equitable societies, something which is much needed in an unequal city such as New York, where approximately one in five New Yorkers lives in poverty and nearly half the city's households are considered near poor. As the population of New York continues to grow, the need for sustainable solutions becomes increasingly pressing. In response, green roofs and public access urban gardens are providing a solution to these problems by improving air quality, reducing heat island effects, and providing green habitats for humans, plants, and animals. In doing so, these solutions not only help to create a more sustainable, more breathable, and environmentally friendly city, but also promote inclusive and equitable societies. 
This story is about Brooklyn Grange, the largest rooftop farm in the United States. Covering over an acre of rooftop spaces in New York City, the Brooklyn Grange farm produces over 100,000 pounds of organic vegetables every year, while also providing a natural way to combat air pollution and urban heat island effect an effect where cities become warmer than the surrounding area due to pavement, buildings, and other surfaces that absorb and retain heat. Brooklyn Grange helps us to rethink our perspective on urban living, and they're paving the way for a more sustainable future in New York City. They also help to design and build innovative green spaces throughout the city, from green roofs and walls to backyard gardens and they help to promote inclusivity and fairness by sharing their knowledge and resources with the local community, hosting educational events and programs, and providing access to locally grown produce. Brooklyn Grange is pushing ahead for a greener, more sustainable future. But why is this initiative important? Well, it's because we need more companies like these in all cities to ensure that food production becomes more local and that nature is allowed to be abundant in all of our cities. Initiatives like Brooklyn Grange not only provide benefits for the environment, but also for the people who live in the city, providing a way to connect with nature and learn about sustainable practices in the midst of the concrete jungle. But before we reveal our last example, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more of our videos on how we can achieve symbiosis and thus create a greener future and live in harmony with both nature and technology. And give the video a thumbs up to help others like you discover it. Thanks. This story is about a hero who uses their creativity and passion to build a home for an entire ecosystem of plants, insects, birds, and animals. A great example of how we can utilize human intelligence and technology to help nature flourish and become more abundant. Meet Stefano Ianiro, an incredibly talented wildlife photographer with a strong connection to nature. He calls himself a wildlife field technician, and he truly is. In the beginning, through his passion for photographing wildlife, he built a small, simple pond to attract wildlife and generate amazing shots of the natural world. But as he was capturing beautiful moments, he also realized something remarkable. It wasn't just a few bird species who were drawn to the pond, but a vast amount of species benefited from this new oasis in nature. Stefano was thrilled about how he was contributing to the wildlife, and soon he wanted to do more. So Stefano set out to create something more holistic. He built a bigger pond with more features for a bigger variety of species to thrive. He sowed a dozen types of wildflowers, introduced homes for birds, and even built a floating plant structure that helped absorb nutrients from the pond and clean the water. And he even built a dust bath for the birds to clean themselves. And it worked. Little by little, he could document with his camera how nature grew and how plants and flowers emerged. This growth attracted insects, which fed birds and frogs, which then attracted even bigger animals. All this life from just a simple pond? It's astonishing how much difference for good we can make if we just set out and do it. We were really moved by his experimental and curious approach to building, noticing the effects, changing something, and watching what happens. By tuning into the ecosystem, Stefano could learn what it could benefit from. And while this ecosystem wasn't damaged, it sure benefited from his efforts. Now, how beautiful and inspiring is it to see initiatives where wholesome humans give back to nature, from which we come, and for which we have so much to be thankful for? And there you have it. Three examples of how nature is healing cities and lives on a societal, community, and individual level. Perhaps this inspired you to do something similar. If not, you can always sign a petition to help nature, or why not become a patron to help us create more videos just like this one. Links to both petitions and our Patreon are in the description. And thanks for watching the video. Here's another video in this style that we think you might like, so be sure to check it out.